The heroes stare intently at Rohana and ask her who she loves more. They wait for her answer. Rowana, with her head down, answers excitedly that she loves them both equally. One of the fathers remarks that he hasn't spent enough time with Rowana and wants to spend more time with her. Mushin is not pleased, and confidently declares that Rowana has spent more time with him. The little girl asks them to walk carefully, as there are steps ahead so they won't fall. They walk together until the second character tells the first to move away from Rowana, for he is standing too close. There is a slight sense of tension and discontent between the characters. They then get into a car, and Mushin asks what the other is doing in his car. He feels an invasion of personal space and doesn't understand what's going on. Mushin, enthusiastically, reminds him that he has prepared a gift for the little girl. He informs her that as soon as they get home, he will give it to her right away. Rowana happily says that she loves him a lot, and her eyes sparkle with sincerity. The hero asks if she addresses her words to him, hoping to hear an answer. However, the hero nearby sarcastically says that the situation is boring. In his voice one can hear the discontent and weariness of what is happening. Rowana replies that she loves the other hero too, adding that she can't love anyone more. The hero chuckles, but doesn't seem satisfied with her words. The second hero says that she doesn't mind if he stops by the other's house. The hero replies emphatically that he won't let that happen. Misunderstandings and discontent arise between them again. They are in the house and the grandfather affably tells Ruan to make herself at home. He also asks the servant to bring slippers for the hero, which irritates the other hero. The hero notices that the servant is mocking him, and his gaze is full of contempt. The little girl tells him that she felt good when she stayed at Mushin's place. There is sincerity in her voice as she reminisces about that time. Rowana says that the hero is probably tired and suggests that he rest and get some sleep. She genuinely cares for him and wants him to be okay. Mushin admits that he would like to go for a walk with Ruan, but really feels tired. Mushin excitedly asks Ruan when she will be back. The little girl, looking in his direction, said that she would be back closer to evening. The man, looking at Ruan, mentally asked her to come back as soon as possible. Su Yen looked at his daughter and wondered why she was wearing shorts and not a skirt. Her father listened and smirked in response to her words. Rowana explained that Mu Sheng's dad had only bought shorts that she liked. She confessed that she liked wearing such clothes. Her father, smirking, replied that girls should wear dresses and skirts. That was his view on things, which he openly expressed to Rowana. Rowana looked at her father interestedly and asked where they would go. Her eyes shone with impatience and she waited for an answer. Her father replied with a slight smile that they would go to the mall. He indicated that they were ready for a short walk. When they arrived at the mall, Rowana was delighted. Father and she walked to the store and asked the salesman in a friendly manner. Father asked the salesman for the best clothes for the girls. He wanted Rowana to look her best and be happy with the choice. The salesman politely turned to Rowana and asked her what color of clothes she liked. She waited for her answer with a smile. Rowana happily replied that she liked any color. Her eyes lit up with happiness as she imagined possible outfits. The hero admonished Rowana that one shouldn't talk to strangers so easily. His tone was stern and instructive. Rowana nonchalantly stated that Su Yan's dad would protect her, and if anything, Mu Sheng's dad would help. She felt safe and secure. The hero asked with slight irritation if Rowana wanted him and his father to fight. There was a touch of sarcasm in his voice. Rowana replied with consternation that she didn't want to fight. Her voice trembled and she looked a little confused at such a suggestion. The hero gently asked Rowana if she was upset. Her eyes began to glisten and it looked like she was about to cry. Rowana quietly replied that yes, she was upset. Her lips trembled, and she seemed completely depressed from what was happening. Su Yen indignantly called second father a bastard, his face expressing anger. He was displeased with the other's behavior. Rowana naively looked at the hero and asked what scum meant. Her question was sincere and she expected an explanation. The saleswoman, picking out an outfit for Rowana, asked how she liked the dress, showing it off with a smile. She was sure it would be a good choice for the child. Her father, standing next to Rowana, asked her to try on the dress. 
He held the garment in his hands and tried to be confident in his choice. He looked at the girl, waiting for her reaction. Rowana declared with great delight and joy that the outfit was incredibly gorgeous. Her eyes glowed with joy and admiration. She smiled as she contemplated how she would be in this outfit. She ran up to the hero and asked if the others would like her in that dress. There was hope and excitement in her gaze. She really wanted to look beautiful. Rowana's father, with a smile on his face, told her to let him be her knight. His gestures were soft, playing along with the girl's play. The saleswoman, seeing the scene between the hero and Rowana, called it adorable. She was pleasantly surprised by their interaction and showed it with her facial expression. Rowana looked at her father in surprise and wondered if he was sick since he wanted to be her knight. She was somewhat puzzled by such an unusual request. The hero assured her that he only wanted to be her father and no one else. He said she didn't need to change to please him. Hero looked confidently at the saleswoman and ordered her to pack her things and send them to the Sioux family home. He wanted it done quickly. The sales clerk exclaimed in surprise when she learned that the hero was a representative of the Su Yin family. This was an unexpected discovery for her, as she had not expected to see such a famous person. She realized that she had missed the opportunity to get his autograph and was saddened. It was a great disappointment, as such a chance didn't come along very often. Rowana, noticing the expression on the salesgirl's face, understood her sadness. On the street, the hero noticed a crowd of admirers who noticed him. They started shouting his name, trying to get his attention. Rowana looked at her father and asked why everyone was looking at them like that. Her face expressed bewilderment and a bit of worry. Her father, hearing the question, told Rowana to cover her face. He didn't want her to be the center of attention because of his popularity. Rowana asked her father why she would do that. She didn't understand why her father was so concerned about the situation around them. The hero gave Rowana a serious look and explained that he didn't want her to be the center of attention in the entertainment industry. He was concerned for her safety and peace of mind. Rowana understood her father's concern and agreed to hide her face. She tried to follow his instructions to avoid unwanted situations. Father praised Rowana for her obedience. He was pleased to see her understand and support his decision. Hiro, holding Rowano in his arms, told the crowd that he could not sign an autograph as he was busy. He apologized but remained focused on his daughter. The crowd of fans took notice of the child and asked if it was his younger sister. They tried to know more about the hero's life and his family. The hero, with a smile on his face, confirmed that it was not his sister but his daughter. He was proud to say this. The crowd was surprised to hear this and started discussing among themselves. This caused some excitement among the crowd as they were not expecting such information. One of the girls in the crowd says that she seems to be hallucinating, as this seems impossible. Her friend supports her by expressing similar sentiments, believing it to be an incredible event. The hero, trying to avoid even more attention, began retreating back to his car. He wanted this to be over faster and without too much trouble. The crowd re-watches the video and there is clearly heard the hero saying, she's not my sister, she's my daughter. This stuns them and causes a storm of emotion. Rowana looks at her father and asks why he doesn't want the crowd to see her face. Her voice expresses incomprehension and slight disappointment. The hero explains to Rowana that he does not want her face to be seen in the crowd. He tries to protect her from unnecessary attention. Rowana replies that she understands him. The hero remembers that Mushin obviously hasn't told anyone about his daughter. He decides to be the first to break the news. A plan matures in his head. The hero looks at his phone and writes a message, walking with my daughter. He decides to post it on social media to dispel the doubts and bewilderment of the crowd. The crowd questions how the hero could lie about not having a wife and child. They start discussing how he got such a grown-up daughter. The hero thinks he is the only one who likes his daughter. He wants everyone to know she exists and be as proud of her as he is. Rowana asks her father what he is looking at. Her gaze is full of curiosity. Her father replies that it doesn't matter, trying to hide his thoughts. The hero, sitting in the car, continues to think about the situation. He holds the phone, thinking about further actions. There are many thoughts swirling around in his head. 
Su Yen receives a call and answers it. He is told that if he is bored, let him go have fun somewhere instead of torturing them. The hero smiles back. A man was talking on the phone. On the other end of the wire, a voice with a note of displeasure asked Su Yen if he had found his child and showed her to everyone. The words were spoken with surprise and disappointment, creating a sense of unease. Su Yen talked about deleting comments. He said that only important comments should be left, emphasizing the need to keep the good ones and delete the bad ones. It was obvious that he was serious. Su Yen was unhappy with the fans' intrusion into his personal life. He explained that he didn't need fans prying into his affairs, showing his fatigue from their attention. The person in front of Su Yen asked him directly if Rowana was his daughter. Su Yen pondered the answer while scrutinizing his interlocutor, preparing for an important statement. Rowana greeted her uncle with a joyful smile. Her face was glowing with happiness, and she was clearly happy for the attention. Her uncle also smiled back, which added to the atmosphere of warmth and kindness. The man looked at Rowana and remarked what a charming girl she was. His words were filled with tenderness and care, which made her glow with happiness even more. Su Yen was perplexed as to why his interlocutor's mood was changing so quickly. He cast a pensive glance at the man, waiting for an explanation for the sudden change. The man turned to Ruan and asked if she wanted to be the star's daughter, then added that she could go to him if she didn't want to. This offer sounded tempting. Su Yen, frowning, told the man not to molest his daughter. His voice was full of determination and strength, clearly showing that he was willing to protect Ruan from anything. Su Yen looked at Ruana with a smile and said that he had always dreamed of such a life. There was tenderness in his eyes as he said how much this moment meant to him. The man opposite said that he knew everything about Su Yen's personal life and expressed surprise when he asked when he got a wife. His words were full of bewilderment and slight irony. Su Yen asked with a smile if he should have a wife. His question sounded jokingly, as if he didn't understand why anyone cared and didn't care about gossip. The interlocutor accused Su Yen of taking his daughter, leaving his wife behind. His words sounded indignant, as if he wanted to know the truth at any cost. Ruana, hearing this, asked Su Yen what scum meant. Her innocence and curiosity touched him. Her eyes expressed genuine curiosity and a desire to figure things out. Su Yen, trying to explain, said that it didn't matter. He wanted to protect Ruana from such complicated concepts and let her know that everything was fine, showing his concern. Su Yen explained that Ruana had only recently come out of the lab where she was created. He added that he didn't know where her mother was and was trying to figure it out, giving his words meaning. Ruana hesitated and asked why the man had swayed her father. Her question was simple, but it sounded caring and wanting to understand what was going on. Su Yen replied that it was his agent and tried to explain the situation to his daughter. He spoke confidently without giving Ruyan a reason to worry over such a simple question. Su Yen, sitting in the car, remarked with a chuckle that workaholics lose everything. His words sounded ironic, but there was something more behind them, as if he wanted to play a joke on himself. My father, seeing the picture, asked what it meant. His question was full of curiosity and he was trying to figure out what was behind the picture. Su Yen found a page that clearly said, Father and Daughter. This inscription caused him to be surprised, he didn't expect the information to come to light so quickly and so unexpectedly. Su Yen was extremely indignant. He exclaimed with annoyance, how could he write that Ruan only had one father? He looked at Mu Xin with displeasure. They were facing each other and the situation was heating up. Mushin parried that he had found Ruan first, so he considered her his daughter. He insisted on his point, refusing to recognize a different opinion. Mushin only looked at him in surprise. Su Yen reminded him that he didn't recognize that anyone could be first in this matter. Mushin was displeased and determined to defend his point of view. Mushin coldly said that Su Yen couldn't do anything unless he allowed it himself. There was stubbornness in his words and he was determined not to give in. Su Yen then offered to discuss how Rowana would live. He suggested a scenario where they would take turns raising Rowana, giving her love and care. Su Yen suggested that Rowana would live one week at each of them. It sounded like a reasonable solution, and he looked at emotion with anticipation of approval. 
Mu Xin suggested that Su Yen stay at his place if he wanted to see Ruana. He wanted to find a compromise and show his willingness to cooperate for the girl's well-being, he sharply stated that he would not live in such a Dutchman house. Mu Xin just hugged Ruana, telling her that he wanted to stay with her longer. He had just returned from a business trip. Su Yen offered to draw up a contract for Ruan's upbringing to settle all the points of contention. He was determined and wanted to set clear rules to avoid conflicts. They began to write the clauses of the contract. The first clause stated that the fathers would take turns raising Rohana each week so that no one would be offended and the girl would receive equal attention. The second clause stated that the father who was raising Ruana for the current week can take her anywhere and the other father has no right to interfere with that. If the father is unable to take care of Rowana for a good reason, he hands her over to the other, treating that week as an exchange, according to the third clause of the contract. The fourth clause states that during the rearing period, the father manages all resources and responsibilities, including transportation and other needs, ensuring the girl's comfort. Mushin thought about adding more to the contract as he felt that the document was not yet finalized and wanted to make edits and suggestions. Su Yen added that if Rowana found other fathers, they would also follow the rules of this treaty. He was sure that this would help avoid conflicts in the future. Mushin doubted that Rowana would find other fathers. He didn't believe that the situation would change and ironically noted that it was unlikely, remaining skeptical. Su Yen remarked that no matter how he tried to avoid it, Rowana would still meet other fathers. His words sounded confident and even slightly foreshadowed a change. Rowana sat on the floor and did her homework. She said that she was going to do the assignment her teacher had given her and was very focused on her work. Mushin asked Rowana why she was doing her homework here in the common room instead of in her room, as if hoping she had a reason. Rowana explained with a smile that she didn't want to do her homework in her room because then she wouldn't be able to see her fathers and it was important for her to be near them. Mushin and Su Yen glanced over, marveling at such sincerity and wisdom from their young daughter. They exchanged glances full of surprise and admiration, understanding her. Su Yen, with a slight chuckle, said that his daughter was so intelligent. He remarked with a note of pride, realizing how quickly she was growing up and becoming wiser. Su Yen offered to help Ruan with her homework, expressing his desire to support her in her studies. He smiled. The latter then asked him about why he was surprised, had he never seen a father kiss his daughter? The other one was very angry. He felt that he was getting in the way. Su Yen was strolling down the street with Rowana, talking about the fact that his daughter's school had started its vacation. He looked contented, enjoying the pleasant moment. He offered to teach Rowana English if she wanted. He noticed her interest and wished he could contribute something useful to her learning. While he was talking, Rowana was concentrating on writing something in her notebook, perhaps doing an assignment or drawing. He also asked her if she wanted an apple. He proceeded to ask Rowana if she was hungry. He offered the apple he held in his hand. Rowana seemed to look at him with surprise. Mushin watched this with annoyance, telling Su Yen not to interfere with her. He was not happy with the interference and insisted that the girl should study quietly. Su Yen replied that Rowana didn't say anything, so he wasn't interfering with her. He stood his ground confidently with a smile and didn't want to back down. Mushin felt annoyed and stated that Su Yen was just pissing him off. His facial expression said that the situation was weighing him down and causing him to be displeased. At this time, Rowana exclaimed that she wanted to do everything by herself and asked Su Yen not to interfere with her. Her voice sounded serious and she tried to be independent. Su Yen said with a slight smile that he just wanted to help. His answer was simple and honest, he really wanted to do something good for Ruan. Mushin said that if Su Yen got fed up with Ruan, she could just kick him out. There was a slight irony in his voice, hinting at a possible problem. Su Yen suggested with a smirk that Mushin was jealous of their relationship. There was confidence and slight teasing in his voice, hinting at his advantage. Mushin replied that he did not want Su Yen to be involved in the girl's entourage. He said that helping a small child does not mean that he is interfering with her. Mushin parried that Rowana is trying to stay focused by ignoring their conversation. She does it to study and not get distracted by showing her efforts. Rowana worriedly said that she doesn't want her dads to fight. She looked confused as if she didn't know how to settle the conflict between Emotion and Su Yen. 
Su Yen and Mo Shen stood side by side, and Ruana exclaimed for them not to fight. The girl hoped that her request would help calm the tension between the men. Ruana, a little nervous, said she understood the importance of studying. But she wished her father would pay more attention to her requests, she sincerely tried to explain her feelings. She noticed that Su Yen was tired from the whole day and offered him to stay at her place for the night. Her concern was genuine and she didn't want him to leave. Mushin seemed to recognize that he couldn't go against his daughter's request. He gave in, realizing that it was important for Ruana to have them by her side at this moment. Su Yen, a little tired, said that he would go to bed. He respected Ruana's decision and realized that he had to give her what she wanted to rest and spend time together. Ruana told Su Yen to go to bed on the first floor. She carefully offered her father comfort and convenience, looking out for his well-being after a long day. Su Yen calmly replied that everything was fine, and he could still teach Ruan English. He was confident that he could do it any time. Ruana looked at him with gratitude and willingness to learn, showing that she valued the support of both fathers and was willing to develop under their care. Su Yen lay on the sofa, closed his eyes and looked tired, as if he really needed rest. Ruana stood beside him and asked him to close his eyes, carefully covering him. Ruana noticed that Su Yen wanted to sleep and reminded him that he couldn't sleep in those clothes. She carefully pointed out that he needed to change his clothes for more comfort. Su Yen, with a slight smile, noted that Ruana was as soft as a pillow. Ruana playfully remarked in response that she was not a pillow and still had homework to do, showing her perseverance and responsibility. Ruana snuggled up to Su Yen and promised that she could finish her homework later. Mushin stood in the other room, waiting for Ruana to return. He was troubled by her long absence and wondered why it was taking her so long to return. At this time, Ruana returned and exclaimed indignantly that daddy was bad. She was clearly unhappy with Su Yan's behavior, although her words were more of a joke. Ruana, somewhat decided to make a joke of Su Yan. Mushin asked her what she was doing and why he was wearing so much makeup. Ruana replied that her dad used her as a pillow, explaining her reaction. Mushin was surprised and warned her not to do that to him. Ruana, not understanding why it was wrong, asked if it couldn't be done that way. Mushin, watching what was happening, decided to capture the moment. He took out his phone and took a picture of Ruana, noting that she was drawing beautifully. He wanted to keep this funny situation in his memory. Su Yan's face had stripes drawn on it, causing him to smile slightly. He looked at his reflection and probably thought about how this moment would stay with him forever, evoking warm memories. Apparently, Su Yan was sleeping on the sofa. Suddenly, the phone rang, and the screen displayed the name Feng Yu. This, of course, interrupted his peaceful sleep. Someone started to grudgingly ask why the guy was still sleeping, adding that Atresia had agreed to replace the lead actress as well as the other characters in the movie this morning. Another person pensively speculated about the tycoon who invested in this movie, noting that the director has become very overbearing. He added that strict when we come back. Su Yen asked the question with interest, trying to find out exactly who had been replaced in the project. He was clearly curious to understand the situation and realize what was going on. The second person explained that a second top actor, a third actress, and a few small characters had been replaced. He added that the investor was very generous and supportive of the changes. He also emphasized that the new actors are quite talented. However, there is one problem, they have to cope with the new demands, and the old lead actress was rewarded for her past services. Su Yen thoughtfully listened to this and thought that the problem had solved itself. However, he was sure that his father didn't care about the movies he was in. The man continued that they needed to be at the movie studio tomorrow because filming would start early in the morning. He urged them to go out tonight so that they wouldn't be late. Su Yen exclaimed in surprise that the evening plans were unexpected for him. He seemed to be a little confused and was astonished to hear such a suggestion. He turned to Su Yen, reminding him of the importance of self-control. The man was clearly shocked to see Su Yen's painted face and tried to explain the situation. Su Yen suggested M.O. Shang look at himself in the mirror and draw conclusions. He did so. A few seconds later, and his scream was heard. Su Yen asked the little girl if she had drawn that on his face. Ruan replied that it wasn't her, it was his beard growing on his face by itself. 
Su Yen smirked as he noticed that Ruan was very brave and appreciated her ingenuity. She was clearly not afraid to joke around and have fun despite the situation. However, Ruana asked Su Yen to let her go as she felt uncomfortable. He agreed but cautioned her not to try to run away from him. Su Yen, looking at Ruan gently, said that he didn't intend to punish her and everything that happened was just a joke. He wanted to calm her down and regain her trust. Su Yen thought about the situation with a serious expression. Ruan looked back at him and tried to justify herself and assured him that she wouldn't do it again. She looked a little guilty but genuinely confident. He looked at Ruan and said that he wouldn't draw on his face again. However, he added that Ruan should help him wash his face and wash away whatever she had done. With a nod, Ruan suggested that Su Yen head to the bathroom to help him clean his face of the unwanted drawings. The two of them headed to the bathroom together, preparing to rectify the situation. The two of them entered the bathroom. Ruan suggested Su Yen to start washing his face since it was necessary. He too began to prepare himself for the process. However, he was puzzled to find no cleanser, cream, or lotion in the bathroom. This caused him some confusion and slight disappointment. Su Yen, with a note of despair in his voice, asked Ruan to bring the cleanser. He emphasized that they wouldn't be able to wash off the drawings without it, as ordinary water wouldn't help. Ruan was surprised to notice that Mushin never used these cleansers. This discovery surprised her and perhaps even caused her to be slightly jealous. With a hint of a joke, he thought that Mushin might be a useless person since he didn't care about such things. At this moment, Su Yen came over and asked if Mushin really didn't use cleansing products. He wanted to find out how this was the case. Mushin replied that he really didn't have any cleansing products. He confirmed this by admitting that he did not have any lotion at his disposal. Su Yen explained that it was fine for him, but it was unacceptable for little Ruan. He couldn't approve of her neglecting her skin care as well. Mushin was a little surprised at the abruptness, noting that it was rude. However, his facial expression showed that he understood the seriousness of the situation. Su Yen proudly pointed at his skin, boasting about its cleanliness and flawlessness. He remarked with a smile that he looked younger and better groomed than the others. He declared that Ruan couldn't be like him because she was a little princess. He was going to take care of her skin himself and teach it to others. Mushin listened quietly, realizing that Mr. Su had a flight tomorrow. He offered not to walk him to the door, understanding that they were in a movie and were busy. Su Yen reminded with a sly smile that they would have to take care of business after filming. He emphasized that Ruan would always be his daughter. Later that evening, as the city fell into darkness, Mushin looked out the window, thinking about the upcoming events. His eyes expressed confidence and determination. His assistant walked over and said that even though Ruan had five fathers, she still loved him more than anyone else. This pleased him a little. Mushin asked with slight irony if he looked old. He was clearly expecting compliments and was hoping for encouraging words from the assistant. The assistant remarked that the master was still young. He said that many people his age were getting fat or balding, but Mushin looked elegant and stylish, which suited him. The assistant offered to share his skin care secrets, as Mushin might have products he could recommend. This sparked Mushin's mild interest. They stand in front of the classroom together, discussing plans for the day. She says that she has to go to her father's office, so she won't be able to go home with him. The girl apologizes for not being able to stay with him. The boy asks if her uncle will pick her up or not. The little girl replies that she herself does not know who will pick her up, but her daddy has promised that he will come to pick her up if he has free time. In case her daddy is busy, there will be someone else who can pick her up. Just then, a woman named Jean approaches them, greeting the girl cheerfully. She obviously knows her and seems happy to see her. Jean waves her hand cheerfully, catching Ruan's attention. Ruan checks with Jean to see if her dad asked her to pick her up, or if she's here on some other business. Jean assures Ruan that general manager Mu did indeed ask her to pick up the girl. This confirms her intention to take care of Ruan. The boy suggests that Jean wait a moment so he can call Uncle Mu to confirm her words. He wants to make sure that what is happening is correct. Jean smiles and agrees, offering to make the call. She looks at him warmly and is sure of her intentions. 
Ruan makes a call to Uncle Mu and informs Jin Zheng that Jin is indeed coming to pick her up. With approval, she bids her friend farewell, leaving him at peace. Jin Zheng leaves and Ruan stays with Jin, who says that the girl's brother is very smart. She remarks that he is so smart and she enjoys talking to him, Ruan confirms with a smile that her brother is indeed smart and is able to study well, even when the teachers don't explain the material very clearly. The girl is proud of her brother. She also mentions that her brother teaches her to play musical instruments and she likes it a lot. Ruan is grateful to her brother for being so talented and kind. Jean watches the girl with interest, and meanwhile they arrive at the Moo Corporation, where the girl's father works. This huge building makes a strong impression on Wan. The girl is excited by what she sees, and asks Jean if her father works in this huge building. She is curious and wants to know more about her father's work. Jean confirms with a smile that the building is indeed owned by Father Wan. She also adds that General Manager Mu will surely not leave the girl out. Jean then suggests that Wan wait in the office since General Manager Mu will be arriving soon. The girl understands and agrees to stay put. She asks Jean if she's busy and says she can wait for daddy by herself. Ruan promises to wait quietly and not interfere with Jin's work. Jean assures the girl that she is always ready to help if needed and is not busy at all. This adds to Ruan's confidence and calmness. Later, a man called Master appears in the room. Ruan looks at him and her face lights up with joy. She is happy to see him here. Ruan looks at the man and begins to cry. She asks why it took him so long to write to her since she misses him every day. The man comforts Ruan, asking her to stop crying, as he himself gets sad when he sees her tears. Ruan explains that it's okay, she's crying out of happiness, not sadness. She says that her tears are a manifestation of happiness, not sadness. The man asks her not to cry and offers to tell her a story. He wants to distract the girl so she will stop crying and start listening to him. Ruan agrees, looks at the man carefully and prepares to listen to his story. She hopes the storytelling will help her calm down. The man begins the story, calling Ruan a little crying kitty. He wants to share with her the story of the nobleman's son. The man tells her that the Inn family lives in the countryside and they have two sons. The older son was very intelligent and healthy and was taught to manage property. However, the younger son was weak and often sick. He spent his days at home taking bitter medicines. His food was unpalatable and he could not eat much. The younger son often dreamed of going outside and eating delicious food like his brother. But it was only an illusion because he was too weak. The older brother loved the younger brother very much and always brought him small gifts to make him happy. They were very close and cared for each other. To keep the younger brother alive, the family looked for doctors. When he was 15 years old, they found a highly qualified teacher who agreed to cure him. But the teacher had to leave home as his condition did not allow him to travel between two places. The younger brother began to recover and soon became stronger. Ruan asks why the teacher had to leave, as the family must have missed him very much. She expresses her doubts as to why he didn't stay. The man explains that the younger brother was separated from his family and was trying to recover so that he could return to his loved one sooner. He was very determined in his quest for recovery. Ruan asks if the younger brother has recovered. She wants to know how the story ended and if her brother is okay. The man tells her that the younger brother recovered but was a greedy person. He didn't want to eat vegetarian food and snuck out of the pagoda to eat whatever he could. Ruan says she would be very sad if she had to eat unpalatable food. She feels pity for her little brother. Ruan wants to give all her food to her younger brother. She touchingly expresses her desire to help and take care of him so that he won't suffer. Ruan listened attentively to the master's story. He explained that the younger son was now leading a comfortable life, he no longer needed to take medicine, and was being cared for by many people. Ruan rejoiced at this news and hoped that everyone would be strong and healthy. Her face glowed with happiness, and her sincere smile reflected her kind heart and concern for others. Master asked a question about how Father Ruan felt about her. He showed genuine interest in the relationships in her family, and Ruan was happy to talk about it. She told the master that she has two fathers who treat her very well. Mushin's dad jogs every morning and takes Ruan to school. 
Ruan also mentioned about Su Yan's dad giving her his snacks and her grandmother giving her something too. She revealed that her grandfather takes them away from her. The girl continued by telling that Su Yan is very lazy but stoic all the time. However, he is very good at playing the piano. This created Ruan's interest in music. She said that she was in the company of Mu Sheng's father who was having a meeting. The little girl asked the master to call her more often. She really wanted to keep in touch. Master promised with a smile that he would try to call Ruan as often as possible, but sometimes he might be busy and unable to talk. He assured her that he would call her when he was free. Mu Shen interrupted the meeting, telling his colleagues to keep arguing and disperse after the discussion was over. They left him alone in the office. One of the employees was surprised to note that the boss had just left. He wondered if it was due to some problem in their project. The situation was making him uneasy. They talked about Ruan and noticed that she was in Mushin's office. One of the staff members clarified that he had brought her some snacks so she could satisfy her hunger. Li Yan was curious about Ruan's relationship with their boss. He was intrigued by how the boss cared for the girl and asked the question with curiosity. The staff surrounded Li Yan, who smilingly explained that Ruan was their boss's biological daughter. This was something that caused everyone present to be surprised and delighted. Mu Xin returned to the study. At this time, the master walked over to Ruan and affectionately stroked her head, expressing his care and attention. The master expressed his joy at finally seeing Mu Xin, for he had been waiting for this meeting for a very long time and was happy. In the office, Mu Xin and Ruan greeted the master. Ruan happily explained that this was the same master Ruan she had told about before. This was an important introduction for her. Mushin looked at the master with slight wariness and caution. He realized that meeting with Master Ruan was inevitable and necessary to clarify some points. Mushin respectfully told Master Ruan that it was a pleasure to meet him. Master appreciated this and expressed his gratitude for taking care of Ruan, realizing how important it was to her. Mushin recognized that taking care of Ruan wasn't always easy, and he was grateful to Master for his help. He said that it was his duty to take care of his daughter. Master Ruan replied that he had raised Ruan as his daughter and didn't want thanks. The most important thing for him was for Ruan to be happy. His words were sincere. Mushin offered to let Ruan chat with Master while he took care of the work himself. He made sure that the girl had time to spend with Master Ruan. Ruan, with a wide smile, noted that her daddy looked tired and needed some rest. She was grateful for the attention he was giving her and Master. Mushin bowed out, saying that they would see each other later, and left Ruan with the Master. The girl was happy for this moment, filled with warmth and care. The father turned his attention to the snacks he had brought for the girl. He noticed that this kind of goodies every child liked and opened the package. Ruan looked at the snacks with great interest, enjoying the moment her father left her such goodies. She was glad that her daddy cared about her and brought her goodies. She said that daddy was very kind and continued to enjoy the goodies. To her, this was a show of love and care from her loved ones. Mushin told Ruan to stay put and let him know if she needed anything while he was working. Ruan agreed and promised to be obedient. She took her father's request seriously and promised to follow his instructions. This was important to her as she understood his busyness and responsibility. Master thought about the fact that he couldn't let everyone know about Ruan. He blocked access to the information to protect the girl from unwanted attention. At that moment, someone called the phone and Master answered it, glancing at the screen of the device. He did his best to hide his concern by maintaining his composure. Off screen, the man asked Ji who he was calling. His acquaintance, who was waiting for him outside, asked the question, jokingly asking if one of his girlfriends needed attention. The man jokingly said that they had caught that guy and asked what Ji Yuan was going to do next. Ji Yuan, feeling angry, pondered his actions and the consequences. Ji Yuan replied that if the other guy didn't want to, he could take care of the matter himself. He mentioned that he needed to rest as the situation was too dangerous and they had proof. Ji mentioned that he knew Kung Fu and could use tricks to stop the situation. He suggested that they should move forward despite all the dangers and challenges in front of them. Ji Yuan agreed, and Ji helped him move around by pushing him in his wheelchair. 
Ji reminded him that he could be a good student for Ji Yuan. Ji Yuan, showing seriousness, put on the ring and said that the enemy should suffer as much as they did. He was determined to do whatever was necessary. In the basement, Ji Yuan and Ji saw a guy tied up. Ji Yuan headed towards him with a determined expression on his face. The guy in chains shouted that his father would avenge him if he knew he was missing. He begged to be released in fear and despair. Ji mocked the boy, saying he didn't understand what was happening. If they caught him, they wouldn't be afraid of his cowardly father. Ji felt confident. Ji Yuan, with fury in his eyes, declared that instead of pleading for mercy, the guy should be silenced forever. He was ready to take decisive action. The guy realized his mistake and began to apologize, claiming that his father had done all of this. Ji Yuan, with equanimity, said that he could let him go if the guy could give something back. He waited for an answer, ready for any outcome. Ji Yuan and Ji, in the silence of the night, discussed the way forward. The boy, once again in chains, felt dread, realizing that his fate was in the hands of these men. Ji Yuan recalled that he was simply returning the credit, feeling determined and unyielding in his actions. He would not let his enemies go unpunished. Ji Yuan, filled with emotion, expressed his thoughts. He thought about the fact that the enemy would not be able to die peacefully, and his father and brother would become paralyzed with fear. The lad huffed and laughed nervously, realizing that his situation was far from enviable. Ji Yuan sarcastically said that perhaps he should be grateful for the reminder of his parents. He added that duty would command him to repay them for what they had done. The enemy desperately replied that Ji Yuan had no proof of their guilt, and the action he would take would be illegal. Ji Yuan confidently stated that his father had no brothers and he himself left no trace. He asked what would prove that the actions were done by his family, since they do it as well. Ji Yuan stood up and coldly reminded him that the enemy's family also left no trace, but that doesn't mean he doesn't know the truth. The guy was startled and finally realized that Ji Yuan was perfectly fine, even if it wasn't obvious before. Ji laughingly pointed out that Ji had been on medication since childhood and it made him very sensitive. Ji knew from the beginning what Ji had been given, and was now gloating. The realization that Ji Yuan had known about his enemies for a long time stunned the guy. He began to tremble and questioned why, despite everything, Ji Yuan remained unharmed and perfectly fine. The bewilderment was growing. Ji calmly ordered that the enemy's parents be placed in a mental hospital. In response, Ji received a short and confident oki, showing that he had no doubts about his actions in future. Ji Yuan, pointing at the enemy, said that karma would find him. He predicted that the enemy would be abandoned by his family, and added that eventually the enemy would have to die. Ji Yuan reminded him that the death of the enemy would be a better outcome than being rejected by his relatives. This, in his opinion, was justice. Confidence resounded in his voice. In Mu Shengya's office, Ruyan, feeling astonished, was carefully watching what was happening. She was clearly worried about her significant other and couldn't help but react to his actions by observing his behavior. Ruan, while in the room, thought about it, but soon her attention was caught by Mu Xin. He looked at her and said that he had finished his work, offering to go home. Ruan enthusiastically replied that it was a good idea, which caused Mu Xin to smile slightly. Mu Xin asked Ruan if she was at school today. The girl looked at him and replied that she had a fun school. She shared that she made a lot of new friends and studied music with her brother Jean Chen. At this time in the office, the staff decided to surprise the boss. Their eyes read anxiety and excitement about what they were up to. They suddenly asked why Mushin was leaving earlier than usual again and what time it was. The employees looked at each other thoughtfully, realizing that something unusual was happening in the office. One of them, perplexed, confessed that he heard Ruan call Mushin his daddy. This surprised him greatly. Another employee confirmed that he heard it too. He added that when he entered the principal's office, he saw an unbelievable scene. A little girl called the boss daddy and it became news. In the room with Mu Sheng and Ruan, they were discussing the situation. One of the men asked if it was necessary to interfere with the news about Ruan. Mu Sheng confidently replied that there was no need. Ruan sat cheerfully on Mu Xin's lap, noticing his serious look. She said that Sun Yen was her daddy and asked Mu Xin to continue working for him. 
Mushin said with confidence that Ruan was busy. Her soft claps on his back caused Sun Yen to be a little perplexed. The man rebuked Mushin for letting Ruan, so small, do the hard work. Ruan enthusiastically clarified that it wasn't hard work. She was just clapping on her dad's back. In her opinion, Mushin has a lot of work to do and he won't get tired of her help. Sun Yen said that he was her daddy and complained about being tired from shooting a movie all day. He admitted that he can't enjoy spending time with his daughter, as this kind of life has become the norm. Mushin, tired of socializing, cast a glance at his phone. He thought that he really wanted to end the conversation. This feeling bothered him a bit, but it was quite obvious. Mushin says that if there is nothing else needed, he hangs up the phone. He is asked if there is anything else he would like to say. He confirms that there is, and adds that he has a suggestion. Su Yen suggests that Ruan come to see him next week to help with the exercises. At this time, Ruan looks at the other hero carefully, trying to figure out what he will say next. When the hero was a student, he was outstanding, the best among all. He remembers this with pride. At this point, another character tells Ruan that it's time to go to bed, but the girl doesn't want to leave without saying goodbye to Su Yen's dad. Su Yen wants to talk to his daughter and asks the other character to leave to play somewhere else. However, he feels annoyed and waves his hand, signaling that the conversation is over. The girl hears this and says goodbye to her dad, wishing him a good night. The next day, the sun is shining brightly and Ruan is excited to go to school. She is determined, especially if she manages to get a better place next week. Mushin asks Ruan if she likes going to school and adds that if she doesn't like it, he can hire a tutor. Ruan waves goodbye to him happily, promising to see him later, and walks confidently to her classroom. In class, Ruan starts telling the other kids how much she loves school. She explains that there are lots of friends there, kind teachers, Jean Zhang's brother plays the piano, and the food is delicious. She clearly enjoys school life. One of her classmates reminds Ruan of the chocolate she gave him last time, and adds that he brought sweets for her that day. Another child also brings her sweets, showing how popular Ruan is among her peers. Suddenly, a new character enters the classroom and Ruan exclaims, calling him her brother. This brother turns out to be her little sister, much to the surprise of those present. This sudden appearance of a brother causes the other children to be surprised, and Ruan is happy to see him at school. Ruan holds out the sweets she brought from home to her brother and offers him a taste. He takes the sweets from her, feeling a special bond between them. Soon he turns to the other children and proudly asks if they saw his sister give him the sweets, emphasizing their closeness. Ruan then rejoices that the sweets were delicious and suggests that all the children eat them together, sharing the joy with their friends. All the children around gather closer to taste the treats, savoring the moment. While the children are enjoying the sweets, the teacher informs them that their school sports ground is being renovated. Due to this, classes will be held at the middle school sports ground and he asks the children to change their shoes and follow him. The heroes wonder why they have to go to the middle school sports field, feeling a little confused. When they arrive at the site, the characters begin to discuss that this is where the kindergarten classes are held and express their bewilderment. The teacher agrees and adds that these siblings will be practicing together, which raises even more questions from the children. Ruan happily explains that she and her daddy run every morning and assures the teacher that she is very strong. The teacher smiles and praises the girl, showing that she believes in her abilities. The teacher then asks the children not to run too far away during class and just go back if they get tired, taking care of the safety of her students. Ruan and her brother confirm that they have understood the instructions, showing that they are ready for class. A teacher warns the younger middle school students not to wait or they won't be able to catch up with the older children. Another teacher encourages the children, telling them to be careful and line up so they can all run together. Ruan decides to take the initiative and starts running ahead, showing her eagerness and vigor. Her brother follows her, but the other students wonder why she decided to run first. Ruan hears a comment that this sister is so mean and vile, remembering the last time she hit a small child, which makes her feel guilty and sad. Her brother, noticing her sadness, asks what happened, trying to support and understand her worries. He is clearly concerned, and as Ruan recounts her act, he asks when it happened, trying to make sense of the situation and help her sister overcome her feelings of guilt. Half a month ago at the family's villa, Mu Ruan promised to come more often to have lunch together. 
The elderly man was happy about it and expressed his desire to see her more often and happily agreed, promising to always remember it. Suddenly the oldest family arrived, which caused a sudden tension in the air. One of the guests, upon seeing Ruan, asked who she was and why she was sitting here. Ruan was a little confused, but tried to hold herself confidently. One of the women present, apparently Jia Jia, moved closer to the old man, pretending to be offended, and asked to move the child so she could sit next to him. Her behavior betrayed an underlying jealousy and a desire to show her advantage in her grandfather's eyes. The girl, feeling threatened, indignantly shouted that it was her grandfather and demanded that the little girl leave. However, instead of complying, she took a step back and asked her grandfather if he could ask her to move. Grandpa suddenly became angry with sternness and reprimanded Jia Jia for her behavior. He reminded her that you shouldn't kick people out, especially Ruan, who was still part of the Mu family. Grandpa's stern tone made the woman realize her mistake and she tried to justify herself, but she was embarrassed and kept silent, realizing that she was wrong. Then, to break the tension, the maid suggested that the little miss go out and play in the garden. Ruan agreed and went outside with the maid. In the garden, a fish in the pond caught her attention, which made her genuinely happy. However, her joy was quickly replaced by surprise when another girl began to mock Ruan, calling her a redneck for not knowing what kind of fish it was. The girl arrogantly explained that it was a koi carp and expressed her contempt for Ruan for her ignorance. Ruan, a little embarrassed and offended, didn't immediately realize what had happened, but soon gathered her thoughts and replied that she had never seen such a fish before, so she didn't know what it was. Her confusion was short-lived, however, for she genuinely wanted to learn more about the world around her, even if it meant admitting her ignorance. Ruan, upon hearing the comment about the fish, calmly replies that it's still a fish, even if she didn't know the exact name. Her calmness angers the older girl, who begins to scream, stating that she hates Ruan and that she doesn't have a sister like her. She demands that Ruan get out of her family. Ruan, unable to contain herself, replies that she doesn't like her either and that she lives in her father's house, not in the girl's house. The girl, getting even more angry, shoves Ruan sharply, calling her a wild child that no one wants and wondering why she came to the Mu family in the first place. After the girl pushes Ruan, a servant immediately runs up and asks if little miss is okay. Ruan, despite her shock, tries not to show her offense. However, the girl continues to scream, demanding that the servant get her out of the way. At this moment, in a fit of anger, Bao Bao suddenly pushes the older girl, who loses her balance and falls into the pond, raising a splash of water. The girl begins to call for help, frightened and confused by what has happened. The servant who was next to Ruan calmly informs her that the water in the pond is shallow and doesn't even reach her chest, trying to defuse the situation. However, the girl, still overwhelmed with anger and humiliation, promises to take revenge on Ruan for what happened. The girl emerges from the water, her anger overflowing, and she caustically remarks that she didn't expect anyone to dare come to the door to see if she had drowned. Ruan and her brother watch the scene, realizing that the conflict has not ended there. The girl, noticing Ruan's gaze, thinks indignantly how this small child dares to look at her as if challenging her. At that moment, she decides that this isn't the end and walks away, leaving Ruan and her brother alone. Later, away from everything, the dark alley next to the school seems ominous, as if it hides shadows ready to spill out. In the dark alley next to the school, a guy with a confident smile appears, addressing the girl who has just approached. He asks if the kid the second uncle brought in studies here. The girl, annoyed and agitated, confirms that she has seen the girl with her own eyes, and admits that she suffered last time, so she is especially upset to see her here now. She asks her brother to help her teach this girl a lesson. The guy, a little surprised, remarks that the girl is very small, and if people knew he was bullying a child, they would laugh at him. The girl, not calming down, insists that he shouldn't just sit back and watch his sister being bullied. She suggests finding people to stop the damned girl, kidnap her, and demand a ransom from the second uncle, assuring him that he has plenty of money. The guy, grinning, agrees with the idea of ransom and remarks that if the child is constantly exposed to such incidents, her character will change and it could affect her future. He continues, musing about spreading rumors about the girl at school to make her school days a living hell. Guy then says that he needs to make sure everything goes smoothly, even if the second uncle finds out something, he can't do anything about it. The guy is sure that he has to think things through carefully before acting. 
At this time, the atmosphere in the building's training office seems ominous, as if something evil is lurking there. At the end of the scene, Qing Buqing's third father appears. He talks about the recent increase in extortion among students, suggesting that trouble is coming. The hero returns home and announces his arrival, to which the little heroine happily responds. He greets her with warmth and a slight chuckle, showing his concern. The heroine, remembering watching a movie where her father played the sick older brother, worries about him and expresses a desire to help him escape from the bad guys, as if she could get on TV. In response, the hero, coughing, jokes about how good he looked in the movie, asking the heroine if she saw how majestic he was. The heroine, confused, realizes that his heroic appearance from her memories does not match reality, and feels confused. Another character standing nearby ignores her, but the heroine still claims that her father looked miserable and weak in the movie, remembering how he was bullied. The heroine continues to reflect on the sad events in the movie, comparing them to reality and asking questions about the characters. One of the characters confirms that the movie was indeed hard and that he wanted the heroine to remember his bravery. He expresses regret for letting her see the movie, admitting that it was not the best decision. The heroine, full of curiosity, asks questions about the events of the movie, but the hero only advises her to ask the other hero for clarification. Soon the other hero, realizing his mistake, realizes that he shouldn't have let the heroine feel so badly about the movie. However, he reassures the heroine by offering to show another movie when her father returns, assuring her that it will be a more appropriate spectacle. Tension builds between the characters as they begin to discuss the implications and impact of the movie on the heroine, leading to a minor conflict. One of the heroes sarcastically remarks that if he were to get serious, he would even be afraid of himself. The heroine looks at what is happening with bewilderment. The next day at the school gate, the hero, immersed in his thoughts, examines his surroundings. His gaze is focused and he is clearly considering something. The hero, with a satisfied expression on his face, asks another hero about his new car, referring to its coolness and carefully chosen model. He reminds them that the car is meant to drop off and pick up the heroine Wan from school. Mushin, pretending not to notice the boast, ignores him while Wan stands nearby watching. The situation begins to escalate when the hero worries that fans and paparazzi might find out about his daughter's existence. He asks another hero a reasonable question about the consequences of this. Su Yen, remaining calm, confidently replies that he is able to protect his daughter and intends to take the initiative to prevent any trouble. He also adds that those who want to know the truth will find out sooner or later anyway, and it's better to prepare for it in advance. The hero, though not happy, pretends to be disappointed and embarrassed, but tries to accept the situation. Heroine Ruan, trying to reassure her father, says that her classmates are good and always willing to help, and reminds him that she is strong. Her father, unable to stand it, agrees with his daughter, affirming her strength and determination. However, he does bring up the issue of suitors who will need to be avoided, which makes him think about how best to disguise himself. The hero, with a dose of irony, suggests wearing women's clothing if he doesn't want to be recognized. However, in response, the other hero, jokingly playing along, declares that this is an okay idea and he is willing to declare himself Mother Ruan. Next, they begin to discuss the possible reactions of teachers and others if the hero does decide to wear women's clothes leading to comical speculation about how it would be perceived. Meanwhile, Juan questions whether she should continue going to school, to which she is given helpful advice about health and nutrition. Ruan's father expresses concern for her safety, advising her to avoid junk food and stay away from dangerous situations. He then decides that he will drive her to school himself, remembering to kiss her goodbye. Arriving at the school, the hero asks Ruan if her teacher is in the classroom right now. The heroine reports that the teacher is watching her classmates, and suggests that her father find out the teacher's contacts for a future parent-teacher conference. The teacher greets Ruan, surprised by her parents' appearance, and immediately begins to suspect that something is wrong. He stammeringly tries to find out if Mu Shang is Ruan's father. The teacher, confused, begins to realize that there are two fathers in front of him, Mu Xin and Su Yen, which leaves him completely perplexed and with many questions. The hero calmly explained to the teacher that Ruan's situation is special and he will be picking up his daughter all week. The hero then asked if the teacher could add him to the parent chat, asking for a phone number to contact him. Meanwhile, Ruan stands motionless with a serious expression while her father takes a picture. 
She listens carefully to the instructions and tries not to move. When the picture has been taken, Juan asks her father what he is going to do next. Her father replies with a smile that he will publish a post on Weibo later and then pick her up after school. It was morning in the Sioux family, and the hero decided to show Juan the morning post on Weibo. Juan stepped closer to examine the posted message in anticipation. The hero confidently said that after the official announcement, no one would dare to think that Juan was an illegitimate child, and he would be able to protect her in the future. Juan hugged her father tightly, feeling safe. At this moment, the heroine asks Juan bewilderedly what is this gift she is holding. The heroine enthusiastically explains that she and her dad Mushang bought it to make a gift, choosing beautiful flowers. However, she admits that she doesn't know how to carve wood well yet and asks to wait until she learns. Her father looks at the gift with slight trepidation and asks if it will be okay. Ruan confidently replies that she is strong and will do fine. However, she realizes that she needs more time to train. Ruan confesses that she is not strong in wood carving yet, but wants to learn how to make beautiful flower bracelets like her master. Her father calms her down and offers to bring her some milk, and the heroine is left watching, remembering that she needs to ask the master for advice. The heroine shouts to the master, hoping he will hear her request. The master turns around and, seeing Ruan, wonders with a slight smile why she is calling him so early. Ruan, gathering her courage, explains to the master that she wants to make beautiful beaded bracelets for him and her father, but her attempts to carve flowers have been unsuccessful. She begs the craftsman to teach her so she can do it properly, expressing all her sincere concern and desire to give something special. The master told Juan with a soft tone that if she really wanted to learn how to carve flowers, she would have to learn how to use certain tools and how to draw. The master added that learning to carve was difficult and boring and required patience. If she really wants to succeed, she shouldn't give up. Ruan replied with determination in her eyes that she understood the master's instructions and was willing to learn with maximum effort to make a gift. The master clarified that her job was only to visualize what she wanted to create and execute it with confidence. The main thing is to avoid mistakes so that the product turns out beautiful and durable. The master looked at Ruan and thought for a moment and thought that it seemed like Ruan was really learning from him. He was touched by her eagerness. Turning to Ruan, father asked if it was true that the master she was talking about was really her teacher. She confirmed that it was true. Father then asked the master with interest if he takes care of his skin and really doesn't use cosmetics. The master discreetly replied that he did not use cosmetics. When the father tried to get a closer look at the master's face, he turned away, showing slight embarrassment at such attention to his appearance. Ruan, full of energy, explained to the master that Su Yan's father was the person she was talking about earlier. Master recalled Ruan telling him about it earlier. The father with a slight smile tried to defend himself against Ruan's remark by pointing out that she herself had a wrong sleeping posture causing him to accidentally hit her in the night. The master looked away and expressed his hope that he would be able to return to take care of Ruan soon. He sincerely wished for that. The father promised his daughter that he would do his best to make sure she slept well, but added that she should try her best too. Ruan fondly wished her father good night. Her father suggested with a smile that if the master wanted to get into the entertainment industry, just tell him, adding that he could arrange a special event. Ruan told the master that even though Su Yan's father is strict, he is still very kind to her. Her father likes to take long naps, but this time, to see her off, he got up early and was very tired because of work. The teacher carefully advised Ruan not to put up with anything she didn't like. He added that if something was wrong, he could take her away right now. The teacher gently touched her head, showing his support. Ruan, full of determination, assured the teacher that she wouldn't let anyone bully her. If anyone dared to harm her, she would fight back. There was confidence in her voice, she wanted to prove her strength. The teacher smiled, happy for her, and recognized that Ruan was the strongest. He then advised her to go to bed since it was getting late, and wished her a good night. Ruan said goodbye to the teacher, carefully reminding him that he should go to bed early as well. Her parting words were full of genuine care and warmth. The teacher, watching her leave, promised that he would definitely come back to her as soon as possible. His eyes expressed longing and determination to fulfill his promise. 